And now back to the MMA Fight Corner. Fight Corner. On the all new Sports 920, the game. The game. The game. All right, welcome back to the Tuesday edition of the MMA Fight Corner here on the all-new Sports 920 The Game. For your host, Joey Varner, Phil Devine, Heidi Fang, and our special in-studio guest, Dr. Jason Burke. I'm Dave Carney. And guys, we did finally get online with Nick Newell, who was fighting at the World Series of Fighting 4 uh, just this last weekend. He obviously came out victorious. Uh, Nick, thanks so much for being patient with us, uh, staying on the line. This is great to talk to you. I mean, we've been, uh, you know, touting your win here the entire show. Uh, so we really appreciate you taking the time to join us here on The Corner. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. And, and it's actually nice to get you on when we knew we were getting That's right. you on. Last Not time Nick we Lentz. Were, last time we were set to it's interview Nick, Nick Lentz, and we got you, and <laughs> it actually turned out to be better because we all knew who, all about you, but now the world knows about you, especially after Saturday night and, you know, the the talks on ESPN and, and everybody raving about your performance. Uh, tell us how you're feeling today and, you know, based on what this past weekend presented for you. Uh, I feel good, and you know, I I worked really hard for for that fight, and and it, it was a big stage, and there was a lot of uh, there was a lot on the line, you know. I mean, there were first time viewers. It was a a bigger show on a huge network, and and uh, you know, a lot of people would would have felt the pressure, but for me, it's just another fight, and uh, you know, every fight's a tough fight, and. He was super dangerous and powerful and athletic, and you know I I just kept my cool and I stayed calm and and I I knew what I had to do. I came in in the fight with a with a uh, n- not as much of like a, a set game plan, but a, a strategy on how to beat him. And you know I I follow I followed through like a charm and got the job done in the first round. Now, uh, one of the things that happened before the fight during your uh, pre-fight interview uh, montage thing they showed there, you talked about how hard it has been uh, getting fights signed because of the lose-lose situation in other fighters' eyes. Um, do you think that's going to change now with the World Series of Fighting? Yeah, you know, because I'm fighting, I'm fighting real fighters. And, um, you know, back in the day, it was a problem. Not so much anymore because I was just fighting, you know, wannabe guys at a local level, guys that fight to impress girls or because they want people to think they're tough. And and if you're worried about catch 22s, um, you know, in in MMA, then you shouldn't be fighting, you know, especially not at a high level. Hey Nick, the, did you know that you were trending worldwide on Twitter right underneath Breaking Bad? Just a fun fact. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I like honestly. Um, I will say this: I'm guilty. I'm I'm on my my phone a lot, always checking Twitter and and uh, Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. But um, after the fight, it was like an overload. There was too much, so I took one look at it and I was like, "This is too much for me right now." I was like, "I'm gonna enjoy the moment with you know with my team and my family, and uh, I'll sit down tomorrow and, and really check all this out." But I don't even know. I like to tweet a lot and I like interact, but I don't know how to see like what's trending or anything like that. Like, I don't, I don't know. I didn't know that. No. One day I'll get you in here and I'll give you a lesson. But, (laughs) (laughs) you know, uh, another thing about your uh, post fight was not a lot of fighters get the opportunity to be on ESPN after their fight. Um, It's not often we see like the wounded warriors handing fighters a flag. What was all that like for you? How, I mean, you already said it was a little bit overwhelming, but what did it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, Operation Warrior Reconnect, I went with them and, uh, you know, on, on Tuesday and went to visit a lot of the troops and World Series of Fighting is great and, you know, they hooked up, uh, all the troops with tickets to the fight. So, like, I had a big crowd there for me, you know, it was like, it was like I was fighting at, you know, at home because I, I had all these guys that, that I met that were awesome, that were, that were rooting for me and, and, um, you know, being on on Sports Center is is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
no well, doubt. you know, Nick, uh, we were talking to Dr. Jason Burke, who uh, Hangover Heaven is, and Vita Heaven LV out here in Las Vegas, you know, work with some fighters. Um, and, and we were all marveling and, and the doctor especially at how exciting your fight was. I, I mean, I think we've got this as maybe a category of a fight of the night, right? Oh, it was the best fight of the night for me. And, I agree. And, and with that being the case, Nick, I mean, here's something. I mean, I know that, you know, with the, the congenital amputeeism, which is the condition that you have. Uh, you know, and like Phil said, a lose-lose situation in some fighters' minds. But with this stage being set up, do you think there's a shot for even bigger and bigger promotions down the line for you? I mean, can you see UFC in your future, That's uh, that sort of thing? Well, I mean, that's really the only one that's 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 uh, really bigger. And uh, for I mean, Bellator is, is big, too, you know, and they have great things going on. But I really love the way that World Series promotes their fighters and, and uh you know, they put me on a on the main card, which is amazing. And uh, UFC is is the biggest, but um, you know, I'm not. I could I could compete with anyone in the UFC and and make it a good fight. You know, and, and I've been saying that for forever, and it's just no one believed me until probably now. You know, <laughs> and uh, it's it, it's funny to me, but. I was a free agent and I signed with World Series of Fighting and I couldn't be happier and, and they're on the up and they really know what they're doing and I'm not going to complain and like and, and say I want to be somewhere else. I'm very happy and, uh, you know, one of the, one of the reasons why I fought so well, you know, World Series treats you so well and before the fight, um, the, the vice president uh, sat us down and he said, you know, he's like, listen, he's like, we're not going to cut anyone after tonight. Everyone still has a job. So, you know, don't, don't worry about anything, but, but the fight and just go out there and fight. Like, a, like I know you guys can, you're here for a reason and, and, uh, let's put on a show. And, you know, that's what we did. And I always, when I fight, it's, it's always exciting. Um, because I, I come to fight. I don't come to not lose. I come to win. And, um, you know, I'm a wrestler, so I, I try to keep a wrestler's pace and, and fast action pack. And I don't like, I'm not like, when I go out there, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to make this an exciting fight. It's just naturally how I fight, you know. Hey, Nick, this is uh, Dr. Burke from Hangover Heaven and Vita Heaven. That was a uh, great fight the other night. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. I had a question, though, just as far as your congenital deformity. Um, looking at pictures, you have a full uh, elbow joint, correct? In yeah, record. it's... um. Yeah, I got a full elbow, and it's like a little bit of a forearm. And you have a, do you have both a radius and an ulna? Or was there uh, just one of the uh, bones in the forearm there? I'm not a scientist. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Okay, because it looks like, um, you know, that, that arm uh, did a pretty good job the other night. And uh, I think people probably discount that a lot. And uh, when looking at, uh, uh, at you, I think that, uh, you know, you did a great job with it. And I think people do discount that uh, issue for you quite a bit, which is to their detriment. Well, and it's it's kind of like uh, Nick. Yeah, it's just an elbow. It's just like hitting with an elbow. So it's like yeah. not like any special rules, you know. And yeah. You get, get hit with a regular elbow. I mean, I was hitting him. I, hit, I, I caught him with a good elbow with, with my right. And, and uh, you know, I against the cage, I teed off with a couple, couple elbows. One thing with it too is that it, yeah, I noticed, and especially I was speaking to a, a, a training partner of mine out here, Ryan Couture, who wrestled with you, um, and he said you came to train with him. And I noticed this in a fight as well is you've really taken that what would be appear to be a disadvantage and turned it into an advantage. Where you know once when, when you go for some kind of move or something, and the person does the quote unquote proper defense, that defense because of because of the missing arm plays into your offense. So they think they're safe, and really they just got themselves in worse trouble, and they're getting submitted. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. I uh, I think I'm just a good scrambler, you know, from from wrestling. So I uh, I I don't really have that much trouble transitioning, and and uh, you know, if someone wants to get into a little scramble, they're gonna have to. I'm I'm gonna just keep moving until they quit. One thing I, w I was wondering is, you know, um, you, Keon was was a decent scrapper and and you know he had good stand up. You know he's known to finish guys, uh, and, and your stand up looked sharp. You came at him, you were aggressive, you were relentless the whole time. You know, throwing throwing punches, elbows, good kicks. 
what I didn't get to see a lot of, and I haven't seen a lot of in the footage I've seen, is is you know your takedown defense, or it's not your takedown defense, excuse me, your striking defense. You know when someone is someone can keep it on the feet, stuff a couple takedowns, and engage. You know how do you use how do you use the the half your arm and how is your stand up defense? Uh, pretty good. I can block just like anyone else. You know, people want to say, "Oh, how's your stand up offense?" You know, I do that. I, you got to watch and see, but you know, I don't. It's not an issue. Defense isn't really an issue. Obviously, I can get caught just like anyone else, but um, I can block just fine. And and you know, I use I try to use good footwork and movement, so I don't really get hit. Do you use the elbow like you know the the rule in striking is you know hands up chin down put your hands next to your temple and and you move your hand where the punch is coming to block the the, the punch with the hand or wrist area so I was wondering is do you use that elbow to block the punches? Uh yeah I do I do um you know if you, if you watch the fight I parried a, I parried a lot of his punches too. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. I mean, from a from a medical perspective, um, I'm an anesthesiologist. I spend a lot of time in the operating room, and there's a world of difference between somebody who still has an elbow joint or a knee joint, and uh, makes an enormous difference in functionality. And, uh, and from looking at the pictures and seeing him in the fight, you know, it's you know he's got you know a congenital deformity, but you know he does well with it because having that joint makes an enormous difference well and one thing before we get in heidi's got a question and so does uh joey before we wrap here but this is uh akin to me to one of your heroes uh jim abbott who was a pitcher for the new york yankees uh, i was reading on a bio that you really looked up to him growing up and it took jim to have great success with the yankees before people uh started to overlook the disability I think with this last fight, like Heidi was mentioning with the sports center, uh, you know, blow up that they had there, uh, you may be moving in that same direction to where it's like, this is not only uh, understood, but completely accepted. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, I think one day people will stop. T- you, you won't hear any questions in the future about uh, about your arm. You'll You'll be hearing more questions and more people will notice the fighter you are and not you know, look at it as as something different. They'll be talking about your fighting because we've seen you fight before. And, and, you know, Joey asked you about your uh, stand-up defense. Hey, do us a favor. Come out of the first round a little bit more. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll get to see it. But that's the thing. Hey, man, if I I don't have to, I won't, you know? (laughs) Uh, No, no doubt. But I I really think I think the future is so bright for you and uh, nothing but uh, continued success, Nick. Well, speaking of the future, Phil, one thing I'd like to touch on, uh, Nick, is is I'm not sure if it's 100 percent con- confirmed yet, but it sounds like you know what's next for you um, will be a four man tournament in the World Series of Fighting featuring Dan Lozon, Justin Gaethje, and uh, Jay Z Calvacante. Just want to get your thoughts on those three and, and who you'd like to see yourself matched up with first. Um, you know, uh, you look at the tournament and then. You see, probably Gagey's the favorite. You know, he uh, he's the most unknown, probably, but he he certainly is a beast. I mean, you look at what he did to Brian Cobb and how he came out and he swarmed Jay Z and got the the cut stoppage, and so he already has a win over Jay Z, who would be the favorite. You know, and uh, then you got Dan Lazan, who looked absolutely phenomenal in his last fight. Um, very well composed, humongous 155 pounder, and and uh, it seems like he he's really hit his stride and and can completely transformed himself into a better fighter. Then you have Jay Z, who's a legend of the sport, and and um, you know has, has done more than prove himself. And and some people thought he was uh you know fading a little bit, but then he went out and put on a performance like he did and beat a guy like Tyson Griffin and and uh really showed everyone that he hasn't gone anywhere. He's he's uh he's a great competitor and he's tough and he's someone that I was watching, you know, before I even trained. I'm like, wow, this guy's phenomenal, you know, like a, a huge fan. So uh I'm pretty much cool with fighting whoever. I don't really like to call people out and if uh if there's a matchup that, that they want that World Series wants more or the fans want more um, you'll you be know, ready. You'll be ready to give it to him. No, not not calling anyone out. I just wanted to know, you know, uh, stylistically, who do you think you match up with well? Uh, I think I have. I think you know, um, on any given day, anyone in that tournament can beat the other one, and uh, 
it just depends on, on who who shows up and how well you perform. Um, you know, I mean, on paper, probably, uh, you know, there's there's certain things like who is who's a better wrestler, who's a better striker, and I don't really. When I get the fight, I'll I'll figure out a way on how I can beat the person, but I don't really I don't really care who I fight. You know, I'm not picky. Well, I tell you what, Nick, that makes a great fight for all of us because not being picky means we're going to see uh, some fireworks. Continued success. Who, who would you guys want to see me fight? I'd love to see you and Lozon. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to see that. Yeah, I think that'd be a slick matchup. That you, or Gaethje for me. Um, uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I'd rather actually see you and, and Gaethje just because we've already seen Gaethje and Jay-Z. Throw Lozon and Jay-Z together and let you and Gaethje bang. And, uh, and, and then, you know. I think that'll be awesome. Nick, thanks so much for coming on to the Fight Corner. We'll talk to you soon.